And I want to say thank you to the president for now realizing that what we advised when they brought this issue of monthly fuel price reviews has come to pass. I personally was seated here where I'm sitting when I told this government that there is no way an economy can tick. There is no way the country can plan if you are going to change prices of fuel every month. In economics, there is what they call edging, price edging in uh, certain goods and, and services, particularly the fuel in the economy. You can only run an economy if at least your fuel prices are predictable for at least a quarter of the year. But where you are changing price of fuel like you are changing price of matches at a market, the economy will not thrive. The economy will not grow. There will be a lot of distortion. And this is what we advised the, the government. Now look at the damage that has been occasioned by this monthly fuel reviews. For me, and on behalf of the people of Zambia, there is no way government can detach itself completely from the fuel procurement uh, issues. We are devised against closing in, in Deni and turn it into a storage facility. The reason is very simple. When we were buying commingled crude to process at uh, Indeni, we were buying the supplies on contract. And these contract prices would take sometimes you buy, uh, you know, uh, crude for about three months. It is very easy for you to fix the price for three months or indeed four months. Because if the price changes today or at the month end, it will not affect the crude that was already bought in the previous uh, month or in the previous year on contract for maybe about six months. You can easily, uh, 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 you can easily uh, have stability in the price of uh, uh, petroleum uh, uh, products. So I'm urging this government seriously now that they've come to their senses that they should go back to the Indian that we knew, the Indeni that Dr. Kaunda created for the purpose of efficiency and also control in the price of petroleum uh, uh, products. Now that Your Excellency, you've seen that what we were telling you, that monthly reviews of fuel would damage the economy, I am extremely happy that you used even a word to say you want an in, in, uh, ingenuity in resolving this problem. Thank you that you have now accepted. And my advice to you is that please don't be a know-it-all president. Learn to listen from others. Because when we are advising, it's not for an individual, it's not for me as Shishimba Kambwidi. When I said these things, I was ridiculed. I was insulted by praise singers that you don't know what you are doing. We didn't know what we were talking about. That we were lost, uh, 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 you know, citizens who did not understand the economy. But today, <laughs> the president has to be the first one to say that this issue must be revisited. I'll repeat, please go back to Indeni as a refinery. In any case, it is long overdue that we should actually turn Indeni not only into a, a refinery that is going to separate Comingo feed, but we should turn it into a refinery that is going to refine the actual crude, not the Comingo the, uh, crude that uh, we were buying. But in the meantime, while plans are, will be underway to upgrade Indeni, or indeed even come up with another refinery that is going to, to uh, 
to process uh, uh, the, the actual crude oil, we should go back to Indeni being uh, uh, separating a uh, separating uh, uh, you know refinery because this issue of leaving the procurement of fuel in private hands without the involvement of government becomes extremely difficult to maintain the price. And I'm convinced beyond reasonable doubt that the damage that has been done by this monthly review of prices can be overcome. And you know, uh, <laughs> we, we, we must learn a lesson from this whole thing. Kapala, Kapala, my, my elder brother. I've always told you that uh, Honorable Kapala is my elder brother. We grew up uh, to, together in Zaoni and Yaro Avenue in Luansha. Learn to listen and appreciate others. Honorable Kapala vehemently defended the monthly review of, uh, uh, of uh, fuel prices. Under normal circumstances, he should have resigned. In countries where morality, where morality is the order of the day, when you make such a big mistake that affects your economy in the negative, the best you can do is to resign on moral grounds. But in this country, people don't want to, 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 to you know, to stand upright with the things that they do. I am glad that the president has now realized that what we're doing is wrong. And we must quickly, and I'm saying quickly, find a lasting solution to avoid monthly review of uh, 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 petroleum uh, uh, prices. Because you see, it is very difficult. When I was working for the mines for ZSM, we used to plan. Our budgets were for one year. And we used to to project the increase in fuel prices, maybe after a period of six months. But where you are having price change of commodities like a, 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 a petroleum uh, a products on a monthly basis, there is no company on earth that can plan on a monthly basis. It's practically impossible. So let us go back to the drawing board and make sure that Indeni is brought back to life as a refinery, not a, 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 you know, a storage facility. But then, then it was serious. Then it was, we tang shefin to fear no at the expense of the people. I have said, and I want to say it again, political office is very temporal. Very temporal. You'll be out of these offices. You'll be asked about these decisions that you are making. Some of you will end up in prison. Stop it. Coming to the issue of KCM, I am reliably informed. JCHX, who are the main contractors at KCM, have sent their employees on forced leave because Vadanta or the mine KCM has not been paying the suppliers and contractors. <laughs> this is very funny. A few days ago, government, the union and everybody were celebrating the coming back of the Danta. How can a mine that has now got an investor fail to be paying their bills, resulting in 1,000 employees being thrown on the streets? I have never made a comment on the issue of KCM being given back to Vedanta, but today I want to tell you that the issue of KCM being given to Vedanta is a scandal. Is a scandal and smells corruption. There's nothing good. You gave them the mine. It's been over a month now. And yet they are still not paying the suppliers and contractors resulting in one of the main contractors pulling out and sending employees on forced leave. Are you not ashamed of yourselves? 
You even go to inform parliament. I am glad to say that the issues at KCM have now been resolved. Which issues have been resolved? In any case, Vedanta has got a lot of financial challenges. Throughout the world, they've got financial challenges. What makes you believe that they will meet their financial obligations in Zambia? How can they even tell you that we are going to invest 1.3 billion in five years? What is 1.3 billion divided by five years? How can you accept an investor who let us down to be given even flowery conditions like allowing them to pledge that they will invest 1.3 billion within five years? This deal is wrapped in corruption. And those who have benefited from this deal, we know you. And we have seen how your lifestyle is changing. Please stop it. I have told you, Zambians, that this government is practicing what is known as white-collar high corporate corruption that is very difficult to see by ordinary people unless some of us who are experienced in knowing what is right and what is wrong. The UPND while in opposition condemned KCM. His Excellency the President himself said if we were in government the Danta could have gone long time ago. What has happened, Your Excellence, today that the Danta becomes a darling? You can even see Zambians. When the president just won election a few months, he went to a mining in Daba in South Africa, where they went and uh, uh, announced that they'll be engaging the Danta uh, with the possibility of withdrawing court cases and see how the issue can be uh, resolved, including maybe discussing to have the mine back. There was a back, back rush. And the president came and said, they are telling us that we are giving the mine to the Dante. Who few go? Who will have what? Tama. Kubecha. This is what the president said. We are not giving this mine back to the Dante. Or we are saying we remove court cases. Today, the same president has been going to the public and telling them that we've resolved the KCM by giving the mind to the Danta. Every time you are making a decision, have a recourse to the suffering Zambians. People of Chingola have suffered at the hands of KCM. I want to thank the Honorable MP for Nchanga, Honorable Chilundika, for standing with the people and say you do not support the coming back of the Danta. That's leadership, my brother. That's leadership. At the time that everybody, some of the ministers were working for, for KCM and were condemning KCM, Today they've turned 360 degrees and singing the, the, Dant, the Danta coming back song. Even the Minister of Mines was a supplier to the mining industry and was also condemning. How can you tell us that the Vedanta of, uh, of uh, a PF is not the Vedanta of today? Vedanta did not only misbehave under PF. They started misbehaving from the MMD days. They promised heaven on earth and they never delivered anything. Came PF, they promised heaven on earth. They never fulfilled anything. What makes you think that they are going to fulfill what you have agreed with them? They are failing even to inject money up to now for operations. The smelter is not working, TLP is in tatters, and yet you people in government, because of your vested interest, want to sing the, 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 Danta, uh, the, the KCM Vedanta deal. Let me tell you, the KCM Vedanta deal 
is a song without a rhythm. Is a song without a rhythm. And very soon, you regret this decision that you've made. You will regret. And I want to appeal to the union. But the union tend to be consistent. You were the same union, unions, who rose and say we don't want Vedanta. You were having protests in Chingola, protests in Chilabongwe against Vedanta. But what has become good about Vedanta? Again, you were the same union calling for Vedanta to come back. And when a decision was made, you were all over the news that as unions you are happy. <coughs> But Vane Mukwatiko integrity. You as unions, you are the ones who are supposed to be on the forefront and say, please find another investor. This Vedanta we don't want. Actually, money more till and profit. No mbali never union will no tampo complain now. It will not be two years from now. You, the same union, you start crying about this decision of the Danta because you did not play your cards well. Don't be used. Don't be used. Let me come to the issue of the conduct of the deputy speaker in parliament. My dear brother, Honorable Moses Moyo, you are going to send that house into chaos. You are going to set that house on fire and you will not quench it. You send that house on fire and you will not quench it. Just think about Honorable Munduvile losing his temper. I know Honorable Munduvile very well. We both come from Mparokoso. He rarely loses his temper. You pushed him too much for him to have reacted the way he reacted. And that should send a warning to you. And by the way, are you aware that Parliament now is watched by all Zambians and uh, outside the borders of Zambia? When you are making these decisions, when you are making rulings, Bear in mind that you are being watched, not only by the members of parliament, but by citizens of Zambia and the, the, uh, uh, you know, people throughout the world. We have observed with concern, the speaker has been very biased, extremely biased. Let me remind this speaker that chapter 7 of the standing orders 2021, on the duties of a presiding officer, subsection 3 and 4 states as follows. One, a presiding officer shall maintain order and decorum of the house. Two, the presiding officer, in discharging his duties of a presiding officer, must act or shall act fairly and impartially, impartially, shall act impartially. What we have seen from our dear brother, Honorable Moses Moyo, is disappointing to say the least. My dear brother, pull up your socks. Look at that lady who has never been in parliament before. This is a, just a second term. You were in parliament before, you left and you've come back. We expect better results and better performance from you. We expect you to perform better than the current speaker and better than the deputy speaker number one. But your behavior leaves much to be desired in terms of being uh, fair. Please, that house must allow all members of parliament across the divide to wear their views 
And it's not the duty of the presiding officer to be helping ministers to answer questions. No, what the ministers meant to say was this. It's not the duty of... If the minister doesn't answer the question correctly, precedence has been, sent to, has been set where the speakers send the ministers out of the house and say, can you go out of the house and come up with a correct answer? But this idea of the speaker saying, no, what the minister went, uh, meant to say is, a minister, you should have... You are destroying parliament. A referee cannot kick or dribble the ball. A referee is a presiding officer in a match. And you, you are a referee in that parliament. But your behavior in terms of being impartial leaves much to be desired. My advice to you, my brother, cousin, is that please be fair. Otherwise, we shall call for your resignation. We shall call for your resignation. We will ask members of parliament to write a petition and every time you come to preside members of parliament from the opposition and, uh, and uh, independence will be walking out of parliament. We will see who you are going to preside over. Don't abuse the sergeant at arms. The way you were shouting, hey, sergeant at arms, sergeant at arms, take him out. There was a bit of resistance from the sergeant at arms. You again shouted at him, sergeant at arms. No, 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 Vamoyo. Vamoyo. That is parliament. That's the National Assembly of Zambia. Please, change for the better. That's not how I have, I was in parliament for three terms and I've got experience. I've never seen a presiding officer who has conducted himself the way you are conducting yourself, my dear brother. With due respect and without malice, I'm just giving you this advice and it's up to you to take it or leave it.